Welcome to the uh, report from Tiger Mountain, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, every uh, slate of reports, I like to do a review now of uh, something on television or something in the media. And we're going to talk about the show The Days uh, on Netflix, which is about the Fukushima nuclear disaster. Stick around and listen. So, we're going to talk about uh, The Days, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to talk about the new show that uh, dropped on Netflix. And um, it's kind of a pretty interesting show, actually. Um, you know, obviously last uh, time I recommended the show to you here, um, you know, at the report from Tiger Mountain, you know, uh, the one Errol Morris had made about the spies and NK Ultra and all that kind of thing. Um, but this one is about the a Fukushima nuclear disaster. Now, it's not exactly, it's not the most, you know, what's the word, um, you know, extravagant, uh, exciting uh, six episode, uh, six hour uh, mini series ever that's ever existed. It's reasonably slow moving. Um, obviously, apart from the first episode where the nuclear uh, accident itself happens, uh, if you don't know the details, um, what happened was is there was a, a gigantic earthquake in Japan, and it, uh, and obviously the uh, nuclear power plant survived that okay. But the thing that really um, fucked it up, pardon my French, is that uh, there was this gigantic tsunami, and when the tsunami hit the coast, this Fukushima reactor was on the coast and basically took out the electricity um, and the backup generators for um, the whole nuclear plant. And as you know, switching off the power uh, when you're trying to cool down um, nuclear waste is probably not a good idea, ladies and gentlemen. Probably not a good idea. And so basically all the power was uh, removed from um, the uh, nuclear power station and then slowly but surely the uh, nuclear waste in a couple of the reactors that weren't fully put away so to speak, uh, began to uh, degenerate and um, uh, various things happened. So, you know, this is a really fascinating work, but like it's pretty much based on um, the, the factual testimony of a number of people who work there. Obviously, it does show the kind of errors that the company TEPCO uh, was involved in. It shows the Japanese Prime Minister having to get more seriously involved as the true, you know, nature of the meltdown um, you know, I mean, the, the, I mean, this is the thing. I mean, obviously, it was a terrible um, nuclear accident, and a, a, a part of Japan, the prefecture of um, Fukushima, is unlivable. I'm not sure of the exact radius, but it's reasonably big. It's about 20 or 30 kilometers, up to 60 kilometers around the reactor. Is people have had to move out from that. But this nuclear disaster could have been a lot worse, ladies and gentlemen. It could have infected and made unlivable uh, approximately a third of Japan, including the city of Tokyo, where approximately 20 or 30 million people lived. So if, if this reactor had gone into full meltdown, they would have had to have basically evacuated the city of Tokyo, and that would have become a, a basically a desert city. And as you know, if you've ever been to Tokyo, it's possibly one of the world's biggest cities up there with New York and um, you know uh, other cities of that size. So you know it's an extraordinary documentary, approximately about 10 to 12 Japanese men. This is very non-woke, ladies and gentlemen. There's no major female character. There's no ma major character who's not a Japanese man in this show. So it's extremely non-woke. It's very interesting about that on Netflix. I mean, obviously Netflix makes shows um, that are European or from the Western world that are very woke, but the stuff they play from foreign countries often is the exact opposite of woke. There was the excellent Chernobyl, um, which was another um, really interesting uh, mini-series about the nuclear uh, reactor reactor accident in Chernobyl, and this one is equally as good, in my opinion, uh, about what happened in Japan. It's about 12 men who basically risked their lives to essentially save Japan. Um, so what they had to do is, after the terrible accident, pretty much they had to continue to somehow um, pump water into these reactors, or else they would have uh, a major meltdown, which would irradiate a third of Japan. And basically, by sticking around and doing this, um, during this period because radiation was leaking already because they had a couple of explosions But the actual containment chambers where the reactor fuel was kept they didn't explode and if they did explode Again, we would have had the worst um, nuclear accident in the history of humanity. So these 12 men um, stayed and uh, most of them are sadly have passed away now due to a radiation poisoning. Some are still alive, so it wasn't an instant death sentence. Um, you know, so it's a really fascinating documentary. I can't recommend it enough. Uh, it's in Japanese. Um, it's six hours. Uh, it's not incredibly fast moving, but I, I found it very moving. Uh, you know, the samurai spirit is alive and well in, in Japan. Um, you know, the, the, the way of self-sacrifice, the, the men who stayed around 
to save Japan and to, you know, cool the reactors. They knew they were giving themselves a death sentence, ladies and gentlemen. So I thought it was very brave, and I thought it was a fantastic six hours of television. So I can't recommend it enough to you. Highly recommend it. It's called The Days. It's on Netflix. Uh, and if you don't want to join Netflix, you can probably download it from Pirate Bay or one of those kind of places. Um, so if you don't want to give the globalists your money, go ahead and do that. You know, that's up to you. But if you, uh, it's something worth watching, and that was my recommendation this month from the report from Tiger Mountain on Media. Thank you.